Today we're going to talk about electric vehicles and this is going to be in the context of the overarching problem that we have which is reducing emissions from the burning of fossil fuels because it's warming our global temperatures. So we have to reduce those emissions. Don't know if we can eliminate them all together, but we have to substantially reduce them. And one way to do that is by uh, converting to electric vehicles. And I know there's a lot of uh, opinions about EVs one way or the other, love them or hate them, uh, but I'm going to just try to dispel or at least put some information out that can uh, try to help make a decision on whether they're, they're helping or not and um, whether or not they are uh, practical to drive. So th there's more than one kind of uh, EV, so let's just quick get some definitions out on the table here. So there's the battery electric vehicle, which is just driven by battery. There's no uh, gasoline involved. Uh, you charge up the battery. When the battery is discharged, you're, you're done driving. Then there's a hybrid electric vehicle, which like it sounds is a combination of a battery driven as well as a gas powered. And, and so they go back and forth. They're more fuel efficient. But uh, once you run out of gas in the tank, you can't drive anymore. Then there's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And it's pretty much like a hybrid vehicle, only it's got a little bit more battery capacity. And that if you run out of ga gasoline, you still have a little bit of power left in the gas uh, or with the battery to uh, continue driving. Most of the discussion will just be comparing uh, electric vehicles or battery electric vehicles to gas powered and I interchange between gas powered and internal combustion. Those are the same things. And by the way, I, I have one of both and I'll bring some of that information forward here in a bit. But I, just to go on the record, I don't hate ICEs. In fact, I really like them. I have a 25 year old manual transmission car that I just love to drive. It's, it's a sweet little car, uh, but I think about, you know, I probably should sell it. My other car's an electric vehicle, and, and that takes some getting used to, by the way, but once you get used to it, it it's pretty fun to drive. But we'll talk about the economics and um, fuel efficiency here in a moment. So speaking of fuel efficiency, this is a little calculator that is on the EPA website. And what I like about it is they do it by state. Kind of depends on where you live, you know, what the fuel efficiency of your EV is. So you can see from the graphic that, you know, I live in Texas and these data are available for the US. There's calculators in other countries as well. But before we get into the fuel efficiencies, one of the things about that the Texas grid is it's almost 40% uh, sustainable renewable energy, uh, primarily wind, but a little bit of solar and a little bit of nuclear and a very small amount of hydroelectric. Uh, so that, that's pretty, pretty nice that, uh, you know, for every kilowatt hour that you're using, uh, almost 40% is from renewable f uh, fuel, yay, Texas. Um, so let's look at the fuel efficiencies there on those bar charts. So on the um, left side is the electric vehicle in green, and that just shows that the, uh, the, the fuel is, is all battery powered. There is no um, gas component. And, and then as we look on the far right side, the big gray column, that's, that's in a, you know, a uh, gas powered um, car, an ICE, and, and you can see the battery EV is about a fourth or a third of the fuel efficiency. And those, are, those bars are measured in terms of how much CO2 is uh, emitted. So a gas-powered car is emitting almost uh, 13,000 uh, tons, uh, or sorry, uh, pounds of uh, carbon dioxide per year, where uh, a battery-powered is, is much 
less. And what the subtlety, what it means is the emission from the uh, battery powered, it, it itself, once it's fully charged, has no emission. There's no carbon coming out of the tailpipe. There is no tailpipe. So all the emissions that are counted are emissions from the grid and generating the power that you use to charge your EV. For internal combustion engines, gas engines, only about 20% of the energy density from the gas is used to propel the car forward. Uh, most of it, I mean, there are losses through the drivetrain, but most of it is lost in uh, the heat in the engine. We all know that car engines get really hot and, you know, that heat energy is dissipated into the atmosphere as well. Uh, electric vehicles, on the other hand, about 90% of the power density in the battery is used to propel the car forward. Um, there are some losses in the powertrain, just like in ICEs, but one of the advantages is the regenerative braking. So when you're going downhill or braking, you're putting energy back into the battery. You're charging the battery. So that's kind of a cool aspect. And let me just give you a couple of numbers from my uh, vehicles. I told you I have one of each. My gas vehicle gets about 25 miles of the gallon. Not quite that good, but that's a good round number. So if I drive 100 miles uh, and I'm, um, I, I need uh, about four gallons, and in my area today, gas is about three dollars a gallon, so I'd need about 12 bucks to go 100 miles. In my EV, um, I get about 26, it takes me about 26 um, kilowatt hours to drive, of battery charge to drive 100 miles. So when you're talking about electric vehicles, you're no longer talking miles per gallon, you're talking kilowatt hours per uh, mile. So um, Tesla chargers today are charging about 35 cents per kilowatt hour. So that same 100 mile drive cost me about a dollar 30 or so. So it's definitely cheap. One of the questions that comes up that I hear is that, well, what about lithium? I mean, lithium is the primary component in, uh, in the lithium batteries for electric vehicles. And the concern is that isn't lithium damaging our environment? I mean, are we trading one problem for another? Well, the short answer is yes. No matter what solution we come up with, it's going to have some environmental impact. But um, the, the, you have to keep in mind the main problem we're trying to solve is carbon emissions going into the atmosphere. So where is lithium mined? It's primarily in Australia and Chile. In Australia, it's mostly in open pit mines, and in Chile, they use brine pits, uh, very similar to how we mine or accumulate table salt uh, for our kitchens. Um, does come with a penalty. It uses a lot of water, and it's uh, done in the desert, so you know that is an environmental impact. But um, you know, compare that to the environmental impact of drilling for gas and oil. So essentially, the uh, overall impact for lithium mining is going to be probably less than the overall impact in, in drilling uh, for gas and oil. But let's switch gears and kind of go back out to the big picture again for a second. Uh, to have an electric vehicle, you've got to have charging stations. Uh, that can be an issue for some people. Uh, behind me now is a map of the kind of the current picture of charging stations in the U.S. And then you can see t uh, Elon Musk has said that Tesla is going to invest another 500 million in charging stations. You can see how much they've multiplied already. I'm not sure how much they've spent in total, but 500 million to be spent going forward. Um, I've taken trips into West Texas, which is a pretty sparse area uh, in my EV, and I've, I've not had any problems. It takes a little bit of planning, more so than 
when you're driving a gas-driven car, but it, it's absolutely doable, especially if you're in the interstate network. If you get out into the remote areas, it's a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, and I will say this, Tesla chargers, superchargers are superior to the other chargers that are out there. We just need to get those chargers up to the same standards. Now, the uh, administration two years ago in the uh, bilateral infrastructure law uh, allocated $7.5 billion to building charging stations, but they're moving too slow. I mean, that money is going to the states and the states have to enact that. There's only about, I don't know, five or seven states that have taken advantage so far, uh, and, but we need more. We need them to move quicker. We need them to have a good specs so that you know, the charging stations are reliable, convenient, and charge at an adequate charging rate. Anyway, that's all I have to say about EVs. Uh, I hope this helps your understanding. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me. If I said something you disagree with, uh, feel free to ping me as well. Cheers.